this is the stage where Adobe Photoshop comes in. To create a PSD network, you go to the Image tab in the UV Texture Editor, and right towards the bottom, we have Create PSD Network. Now this box comes up called Create PSD Network Options. As you can see, the PSD network will be saved into the Source Images folder of your project. And the name of the file consists of the name of your project, underscore the name of the model that the UV map belongs to, underscore meshshape.psd. So in this case, the file will be called tutorial underscore heads, which is the name of this file, underscore heads, which is the name of the model, and underscore meshshape.psd. Now we just need to go down to the attributes section, and you have two lists. The attributes, all of the attributes uh, that are in our UV map, and a separate list, which is currently empty, called selected attributes. In our attributes list, the one attribute that we will need is color. So select color, and you see you have these two buttons here. Yeah, click on the right button, and now color is carried over to the selected attributes. That means that color is the only thing that can be manipulated through our PSD network. So now simply click create and down here it says that our PSD network has been created. So let's close our UV texture editor and now open Adobe Photoshop. Now that we're in Photoshop, we need to locate our PSD network file. So just go to the File tab, open, and it should be located in your project folder, which in turn is usually in a directory called Maya. And the Maya folder can usually be found in the Documents folder. I believe that's the same for Mac and Windows. Uh, you need to locate your project folder. In this case, it's called Tutorial. And we have all these folders containing everything within our projects. Our PSD network is located in the folder called Source Images. And here we have it it's tutorial underscore heads underscore heads underscore mesh shape. PSD. Just open that and here we have it. Now if you look at our layers box you see we have several layers. We have the UV snapshots which is essentially a UV map and this is used as a guideline for applying our textures and um, making sure each part of the texture is in the right part of the UV map and then we have a folder here called skin.color skin because that's the name of the Lambert if you remember earlier on and color because that's the attributes that we chose to assign and layer 1 is our Lambert texture now in order to apply a textural effect to this PSD network. Make sure you've got layer 1 selected which is located under the skin color attributes folder and say if we want to apply a skin color to this UV map. How we to do that is by clicking on our color palette down here. Uh, let's select a color which would make a good skin color so somewhere around here this would do so make sure you're not in the UV snapshot layer make sure you're in layer 1 you can simply color in like so of course if, if you want to sit down quickly 
then there's no reason why you can't use the bucket tool. So now we've got a skin color applied. In order to see how this color looks on your head model, what you do is you save your PSD network. But we'll just keep it open for the time being as we will go back to it. Now, open Maya again. And now we just need to update our PSD network. Now to do that, we go to the main menu bar and we go to the rendering menu sets. And then we go to the texturing tab and you'll see this option called update PSD networks. Now select that and you'll see that the coloring that we've just done has been applied successfully to the model. If we go back into Photoshop, you'll see that you'll be able to make even more changes and improvements to this texture. The beauty of Photoshop is that you can have more than one layer, so you can apply as many different blemishes to this skin as you want. For example, if we wanted to create blushes, what we need to do is uh, create a new layer. So how we do that is make sure that layer 1 is uh, selected because layer 1 is in the skin.color folder and we want the next layer to appear within that folder. So just uh, click this uh, button to create a new layer. It's, uh, it looks like a piece of paper which is slightly folded over. So click that and we've got a new layer called layer 2. Now to create our blushes I'm just going to Select an appropriate color, something red, but not two reds. That ought to do it. And now, you, using the UV map as a guideline, I'm going to start coloring in some blushes. You can see that this texture is fairly thick, so instead, uh, we're going to use a different brush, a much uh, softer brush. So, let us see. I think we'll go for this one, uh, the 45. And as you can see, it's much softer. When you're doing this, you may want to use a photographic reference to get uh, the levels of color much more accurate. So let's save this. And go to the texture tab and update the PSD network. You can see it's fairly thick, so let's let's uh, turn down the opacity. So how we do that is in the layers box, there's an option called opacity. So just open that and turn down the opacity, but not too much. I'll save that and update the network again. And not only can you apply blushes, but you can also do other stuff like create hair. So to do things like that, just uh, create another layer and just select a different brush. If you open the brushes tool, you'll find there's an array of different brushes for different purposes. We'll use this one here. It's a one strain of hair with a diameter of 112. But we can turn the diameter down and let's change the colouring. Um, say if we wanted to make his hair red and black. Now if we colour in his hair. You may want to use a graphics tablet to do this. Okay, I've just created a layer of hair for our UV map texture. Now let's save this and return to Maya. 
So text string update PSD network. You'll see that the hair has come up in the way that we want it to on the UV map. And the thing is that you don't need to stop at creating hair and skin blemishes. You can use your imagination with this. You don't have to do it the same way I did. Uh, now this, admittedly, is a fairly basic texturing. But when you're doing this, you can just use your imagination, really. Basically, anything that you can do in Photoshop, such as applying filters, layers, different brush strokes, any of that can be applied to your UV map to create a texture. So any fine art skills or technical skills that can be applied to Photoshop can be applied to a UV map. I'll just show you one more thing fairly quickly that you can do. When you've UV mapped a model, you can also apply photographic textures to it. And I'll just show you this image that I created. This is an image that I created from various photos that I took of a head from the front, the profile, the top and back. And I put them together to create this flat UV map like texture image. And uh, what we're going to do with this is apply it to the model to give it quite a photographic texture. So how we do that is in Maya, select our model, and we're just going to assign a new material. In, in the attributes editor, we have common material attributes and color. Now in color, we're going to click the checkered button and we get this list of possible textures that we can assign to this Lambert. The one we're going to need is a file. And image name, uh, just click on the folder and, and let's just assign our head texture. And as you'll see, it's been assigned. Admittedly, it works better if the photographic reference that you model your head against and the photographic reference that you texture your head against are the same but it still fits fairly well. Now we've run through creating a texture from scratch and applying them to a UV map in Photoshop and we've also run through applying a pre-made or photographic reference to a UV map. But you could also texture this UV map directly on the model uh, using 3D painting, which can be done in Maya, as well as various other modeling and texturing programs, such as ZBrush, Mudbox, and Body Paint 3D. So pretty much any fine art skill can be applied to the texture of a model once you've done UV mapping. In conclusion, UV mapping is a very technical skill to learn and one that takes some time to master. But once you get UV mapping done, it will enable you to have a vast degree of artistic freedom. I've been James Waters and thank you for listening to my tutorial. I genuinely hope it's been useful and good luck with your UV mapping.